How many here feel like they might not be strong enough to shoot the gun fast? I'm gonna show you that you can. Yeah, so you make sure, how would you, if you're gonna fight, you're right now. Yeah. Don't move. Don't move. Don't bend the wrist, don't push it back. I'm gonna take my hand up, go fire one. Guys, who's carrying appendix? Raise your hand. Four and two. Ready? Four. You guys have clean targets. That means any sins, we know that are you. From the hip, bitches. Did I hit? Did it work? Don't worry about it. We got you. Relax. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We're going to get to drawing. We're going to get to systems for how we load and unload these guns, how we present it, how we do all that safely, and then we'll start compounding that shit. Present your gun, Shane. Go ahead and load and come back to the holster. Cool. Roll back. So we talked yesterday about what your goals are. I have goals for you that we will send you away with the ability to teach yourself this stuff so that you're not wasting time on the range. Listen up, guys. So, because we're training to use these guns in violence, if we're talking safety, we can be safe. We can just put these guns away, unload them, take them to a chop saw, sell them, throw them in the creek, and they're safe, right? We can't, you can't make a, a thing that's made to put holes in flesh safe you are safe or unsafe. Agree or disagree? Yes. So it is our task to not only know what's here, but what's there. We've got a mile all the way back to the road of nothing. So we know we're safe. These nine millimeters, if you shoot over the trees, are not gonna hurt anything, but is that a good practice? No, no. so we're gonna be completely cognizant this whole weekend of what's around these targets. As we start doing some of the medical stuff, it's gonna become even more apparent because there's gonna be a cacophony of noise and going on around you. If a piece of brass goes behind your glasses, down your shirt, into your partner's shirt, it will hurt a little bit. It will leave a little burn. Is it better for you to get a little burn on your face or to point your muzzle at everybody? Burn. Okay. When I tell you look left and right, it is not just me telling you that because I've memorized saying that. If one of you dudes has left your ears like this and you look, you can say, hey Mick, your ear, oh shit, I forgot. Or your glasses are up on top of your head. We're, we're here to look out for each other. I don't know how many times I've seen dudes shooting and all of a sudden they realize that their ears are on their head and they're doing this with a loaded gun. We're not doing that. Yeah? If you drop something, there's no range fairies coming to steal it. Leave it there. And we'll tell you, look left and right. When all the guns are holstered, go ahead and scoop your gear. We're gonna have you guys shoot a group. You've got this whole target zone. We're gonna shoot Evens first, then odds. One group, the context of a group is what? You want a tightest group as possible. And what has to happen to do that? Consistency, good sight picture, good trigger prep, all that good stuff. We're not gonna talk about that right out of the gate. We wanna make sure that you're doing it, what you're doing and we'll see it. Tightest group uh, wins something off that prize table. So the tightest group, you've got this whole white zone We'll go at five yards. That's that second line. That's pretty darn close, at five yards. The first group of shooters shoot the top quadrant of this paper. If you do a pretty decent job, you'll leave the bottom half of the paper for the odds. I'll give you one pro tip. The first bullet hole becomes the target, right? Yes? Yes. So no matter if you, if you throw one all the way over here, the first bullet hole is the target. Yes? Yes. What's the target? All we're looking for is the good 10 round group. Eyes and ears, range is hot. Remember that. Go back to the first bullet hole.
When you're done, roll off. When you're done, roll off. So we know you're done. When you're done, roll off the line. If you're done, roll off. Guns. Oh, they need to reload. Yeah. yeah. Reload. All the guns holstered. Looks like Mississippi took it. Yeah? We got like an inch and a half group down here. So here's the here's the good news. Everybody did that safe. Here's the bad news. These guns are capable of putting every bullet in the same hole at this distance with the worst ammunition on the market. Every bullet in the same hole they're capable of. We're not going to pick on anybody, but if this is happening, where was the muzzle when that round went off? Right there. Right there, right? Where was the muzzle when that round went off? Right there. How about that one? Right there. So there's no mystery there, right? We're gonna really quick all get on the line when I tell you to, and we're gonna unload, and we're gonna do some dry fire for a minute. The best shooters in the world dry fire. Dry firing is not just pressing a dead trigger. Dry firing is pressing a dead trigger, but if you're doing it right, you are training in the correct movement. Everything we do with these guns, we're learning something right or wrong. Learning, training, and graining. So every time I touch this gun, I, I want to do it the way I would want to do it. Does that make sense? If I wouldn't do it here, why would I expect to do it there as we talked about yesterday? Yes? If I wouldn't train it here, why would I train it at all? Because the purpose is that I want to be good with this thing to save life. Yes? So every time I touch this gun, I've got a firm master grip. So we're just going to start working through this. What's a master grip? High and tight to the gun. There's no extra space. So the way these guns work is we are dominating it through leverage, through friction between our skin and the gun. In order for there to be friction, you got to touch it. So the more skin you can apply to the gun, the better friction coefficient you could get. Agree or disagree? Agree. Yeah? Paul's going to do an awesome block on recoil mitigation. But if we're not making, if we don't uh, out of the gate have this high grip, we're just shortchanging ourselves. So this is, this gun's gonna go off, that nine millimeter or whatever's in your gun is going to send that recoil impulse back towards you. Your job is not to stop it from happening. It needs to happen, otherwise the gun's not gonna cycle. Yes? So high and tight, as we're coming out of the holster, I'll work today in this and tomorrow from the appendix. I want a holster that allows me these touch points. So this is dry fire 101, touch points. Look at the knuckle of my right finger versus the knuckle of my left. Yes? You see that even from down there? That's probably 10% fatter. That's just tissue, right, from slamming into the same spot over and over. So that's a touch point. If I don't touch that, I've trained myself that I don't have a good grip. This web of my hand, I've got a little chunky bit of callus there from it touching this part of this pistol. So before we even draw the gun out of the holster, ensure that you've got a master grip. Now, are you gonna fix that in five seconds this morning? No, but throughout the weekend, we can work on it. How we know that, that it's working is the target starts to change. That's why we wanna pace these targets often, and we will. If you've just got holes everywhere, you don't know where the bullet holes are going, then you're not able to take back data. Yes? So, master grip. The gun comes out of the holster. This hand from years of doing it came to the center line of my body. Now, as we say always do it a certain way, that might not always be a certain way. I might be holding one of, uh, one of you tomorrow drawing a, a cert gun, right? Or drawing the, the sim gun. So I can't always bring this hand here, especially if it's tied up with you. So I need to be able to draw this gun with one hand. Yes? I might, if I'm, if I'm concealed, like some of you guys are, I might have to be able to get on the gun with just one hand, yes? If I always do it this way, I'm when this hand is now around one of your necks, yes? Or fish hooking you, yes? So we gotta think about that. Can I do that this, this way? Could you, could you get the gun out when you're on your back? And we're gonna do that. So I've got that master grip. The gun comes out of the holster as presented today towards the target, because that's where we know we're gonna be engaging. This hand, because it was at the center line of my body, can join with the gun. Yes? yes. So let's 
come up a little bit, come up, and V up so you can see me. Step this way and that way. I'll use the cert for a minute and then we'll shoot. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna have you clear your guys' guns out in a minute. I'll do it, I'll do it uh, with the cert here for a minute, but we're gonna have you access the pistol, present it towards the target, you're gonna join your fingers. A very simple way, um, Cara, come here, because you need this on your left hand. So your, your left hand was kind of bouncy on the gun. So this chunk of index finger, somewhere in here, everybody's hand's different. Every gun's a different size, every hand's a different size. So we can't always say this knuckle. That's why things where people explain where to put your index finger are bullshit. Your hands are not the same as my hands, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, we're trying to formulate what works best for us with the gun that we choose, which is why it's important that we choose a gun that works for us too. We might buy a gun that looks a certain way or we like how it shoots, but you give it to your wife or somebody else and they don't have the same result. So as this hand joins the gun, think of a karate chop. Wah, wah. See that? Just a, a little karate chop. There's no, you're not, there's not uh, a strike to the gun, but I got that touch point. And as that happens, what, what one thing I did is I've taken any space out. What's better, that or that? That or that? Yeah, so if I'm touching it, I'm touching it. I can't go any deeper. Like super troopers, right? I can't pull over any farther, sir. So if I'm touching, I'm touching. And then there's a little trick to this. That looks pretty good, right? Yeah. Look pretty good, but check this out. Uh, yeah? Uh, yeah? All that's happening is this, just that. So what happens to that tendon when this happens? Yeah, tighten it, 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 it's got, it's at a set point now. It can't go any farther. And when I grip, this is all locked out. Paul's gonna go into that tomorrow, but I want you to get good reps with this. Here, oh, ow, hey, oh. ow! It's this isn't um, this isn't anything complicated. If you think this straight line right across, like ooh, I'm pointing at Z with my thumb, versus this, not the Fonz pointer guy, not the Fonz pointer guy. Touch, rotate, and grab onto the gun. Yes. Yes. This hand is gripping the gun. It is it is an active participant in this process. Robbie Latham, one of the greatest pistol shooters of all time, he goes by the name, sorry, I just spit, the great one. And people ask Rob, how much do you hold the gun? He says, about as hard as I can with this one and about as hard as I can with this one. Well, I was always told, hold it like a bird, that you don't want to get away, but it's like an old, that's an old NRA thing, hold it like a bird, about tight, you've heard that. Tight enough that, that it won't get away, but you know, not, not hard enough to kill it. Or somebody else says a firm man's handshake. We're, we've all got different hand sizes and structures. I can hold a gun pretty good. There's a cool picture of him on the internet. Was it Glock 17? Yeah. Him with a Glock 17 with a mag out, squeezing it so hard that the magwell was a parallelogram. Yeah, he just squeezed it without a magazine in it. He was, in those days, doing a lot of power lifting shit, but his magazine well was like Don't let Lenny hit the rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that old cartoon, Lenny and the Rabbit? So we're, we're gonna work on that, that, how those hands join. Really nice thing about this process is when I holster this gun, check this out. So I'm done shooting, I can come back in. This hand just stays right here. Another touch point. I use this chunk of meat, just it's there, I know it's touching. If it's here, it's not in front of a muzzle. So there's a safety aspect to this, right? So as that gun comes back in, this guy just says, all right, I'll see you later, it was a good time. Okay, cool. And it goes in there. And then when I come to draw out again, hey, I'm going to get the gun. Okay, I'll meet you in the middle. Yeah, that's it. This, these movements, if done right, look really effortless. They look, there's not a lot going on. Yeah? So I'm gonna clear this gun out, master grip, I draw just like I always draw. Remove the source of ammunition. Store it on my body. Cycle, cycle. Lock the slide to the rear visually and if needed, physically inspect the chamber. Do I need to shove my finger in there when I watch the round fall out? No. no. We want redundancy, but I don't need to be stupid. If I saw the round fly out and I see the empty chamber, I don't need to shove my finger in there just to do it. That's stupid. So we're not gonna do that. I saw the round fall out. So the gun's empty. Slide forward for me, decock, thumb check, and I'm gonna safely holster the gun. So now I'm in dry fire mode. So for me, gun's empty, I can press the gun out, pressure, 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 gun's gonna go off. 
when you're unloading, why didn't you hold it down like it's a quiet little secret that you don't want anybody to see? So I thought you wanted to do that. It's a secret gun, right? It is a secret gun. So you got to keep it way down here. This is the point Z's making, and this is something that if you watch enough people do things, I love watching body language. You learn a lot. A couple of you guys came in last night all sheepish because it's a bunch of dudes just like high school. Man, I hope they're not going to judge the shirt I have on. There's not enough American flags on it. I got no camo on. I've got no overt veins on my forearms like some of these guys. They might think I'm less than. You know what I mean? You see it. I saw it on a couple of your faces. I see it on your right now. They saw it. So when we see you with the gun and we're telling you to do stuff, what Z's saying is you're like this. And it's not because that's where you want the gun. It's literally your body language is telling us, I don't know exactly what I'm doing and I don't want to look less than. So our mindset is that we're training with these things to win a fight. So we hold the gun up here. Well, a couple reasons. Think about this. Right now, if I came around, today is Jeff Hull's birthday. Where's Halsey? Birthday. We're going to sing to you later. So it's Halsey's birthday. It literally is his birthday. Come here, you son of a bitch. Run. Love you. Love you too. Hold him. Hold him. Thank you. Come on. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> if I right now had cake and I said, Halsey's birthday, let's all have cake, vegan cake, dairy free, no f good stuff at all, but it was still t cake. And we walked around and we handed you cake. How would you eat that cake? Right now, pretend, close your eyes for a minute. Imagine that we just walked around and handed you cake. How, I handed it to you, We're, be, close your eyes, eat the cake. Secret cake though? I'm eat it here, it's a secret cake. I mean, if it's a secret, I'm like. Right, you know, nor would you be like this, this is good cake. Nor would you be like this, right? You're just gonna probably sit right here. If we're gonna have lunch out here tomorrow on the range, none of you are gonna sit down here with your sandwich, right? You're gonna just sit like this. Oh man, this is really a great time. These jokes are amazing, right? And you're gonna have a good time eating right here. It's comfortable. The T-Rex arm, see how this ties together, what the guys were teaching you earlier? You're just right here. So with these guns, cert gun, with these guns, this is just comfortable. When it's comfortable, you're efficient. And when you're efficient, you're fast. We're gonna start working through this. The best way to get better at this is repetition. So we're just gonna be relaxed. The other thing is, imagine right now, everybody, wherever you're standing, look at that large tree right there the tallest tree that's straight behind the range. On the count of three, the first person to touch that tree gets a million dollars. Think about this, on your mark, you get a million dollars cash hey there, on your marks, get set, think about it, come on, do what I'm telling you. You're not gonna really run anywhere. How, you all, a couple of you got it, right? You squared off to it, you, you moved right towards it because I gotta go there, I gotta go there. Your center of gravity dropped, you probably felt your weight come up onto your toes a little bit. Feel your body weight come onto your toes. This is for real. If, if we're doing this, we're doing it. So as I'm presenting this gun, I'll feel my weight come forward. My knees slightly flex. I can move from here. I can do whatever I need to do. I'm not gonna stand here and do this. Almost as if you're preparing to fight. Did you hear that? Did you all hear that? It's very similar. We are preparing to fight. Make no mistake. So wrap your brain around that. All right, I don't need to pretend either. This is good, I can do shit from here. I can kick you, I can headbutt you, I can do whatever I need to do. Every time we touch the gun, we're learning something. I'm gonna load this gun, so this gun is empty. I'm gonna present it to the target. I'm not gonna shoot, but we will put our eyes and ears on right now. Present the pistol to the target. My slide is already locked back. If it wasn't, I would lock it back. This is a good time, as Z's buddy uh, Carl likes to say, to do like a, a quick systems check. I'm doing an administrative load. Sight's loose, nothing's falling off the gun. There's not a popcorn kernel that fell in there last night. Yes? Understood? So this is not, we're not gonna do this every time our gun goes empty. This is right now, I've got all the time in the world. I'm setting this thing up because I wanna find it in the best condition possible, which is loaded. By find it, I mean that I'm training every time this gun goes in the holster that it's the way I would have to fight with it. Yes? yes. Do any of you leave with three rounds when you go out of the house? No. I'm just going to put three in today and see how she goes. Force a reload. No, you would top the gun off. If you're smart, you take the mag out and shove one more in after the gun's loaded, correct? Yes. So that's what we're going to do. So I've got this master grip in this cake eating space. Look how I'm holding that magazine. Something else, if I am training, 
with this gear that I carry, this magazine is in my pocket. Seat lock tug, tug. Cycle, for me, I'm gonna press check. I only saw one or two of you press check. Well, press checking's stupid, is it? This weekend, we will have at least five, 10, maybe 20 of you load your gun and then it go click. Well, I thought it was loaded, yes? So this is kicking the tires. I'm making sure everything's good because this is the condition I want to find it in. So I know it's loaded. If you've got a striker gun, after you pull that action back, and all you're doing, guys, is just opening it enough to see. You're gonna make a little fist. You'll know your gun. You know, a good, a good carpenter knows his hammer. If you shoot enough, you'll know if it's in battery or not. If you don't, make a fist. Tap, tap. That's it, nothing hard. Tap, tap. Thumb check and holster. When we're press checking these guns, I can grab this slide. I can pull back just enough to see brass. If you're shooting these 92s that are now sexy, you've got these little levers here you can hook onto. If you um, bring that gun in towards your body and grab overhand and it's up against your titty and I pull back, I don't have space for that to happen. Do you understand? Did you all see that? So if I come right up against my body here, I'm just pulling back that far. This is a fine movement. I'm not, I'm not doing anything crazy. I'm just looking for brass. Every time I load the gun administratively, this is not a bad process. You shoot enough, you'll know what's going on. This is a fail safe. It's a fail safe. If Z or Paul's on top of you caving your head in, that's not a good time to find out that your loading process was not robust. That your last thought could be, I wish I would have spent some more time practicing to put that gun in the holster loaded because I just blacked out and now I'm dead. <coughs> yeah, that's not a joke. That's not a joke. So this weekend, if your gun comes out of the holster and it goes click, think about it. That's exactly what would happen the day I needed it. Nick, so, so what's firearm safety rule number one? Gun is always loaded. Yeah, treat every gun as if it's loaded, gun's always loaded. But that's good for safety, and that's the way you should do it. But does that mean it's actually loaded? No. Yeah. Do you need to know that? Yes. The unwritten rule of firearm safety is always know the condition of your gun. Always know it. However you do that in the safety and the environment that you're in, that's on you, but always know. Not trust. What do you do when, uh, if Mick handed me a, an unloaded gun and he checked it? What would I do? Check. Oh man, what do you got to oh, check? You don't you trust me? Your man, that's why. No, because I don't. I, if I trust, that's one thing. But I need to know. I don't know just because he knows. It doesn't transfer over to my brain. I look and see. And then people say that loaded chamber indicator. Well, is the machine always? Can you rely on every machine to work every time? No. Made by us, right? We're fallible. So, no. If I don't know, and that's my. My, my philosophy on the on the, the press checks, right? If I didn't see it, if I do know and I see brass, that's fine. But if I don't see it, then I wanna know. Especially if I'm counting on this for the context that we're, we're training for. The argument often is, well, that's how, if that's what I'm training, that's what I'll always do. Has anybody ever heard that argument? In a, in a fight, I'll end up doing that. Well, in a fight that statistically any of us, any of us would ever be in with a gun, you're not reloading it statistically, that's a fact and we can run those numbers later if you want to but how many of you get in your car and can drive 80 miles an hour on the freeway how many have how many of you have taken that same car through a school zone or a drive-through yeah you you control it you control it and that's what we're doing you and, and self-talk is really good here I am ensuring a very well uh, or very good loading process Seat lock, tug, cycle. That's why we are saying that. So I'm gonna unload this gun again and then we're gonna do it together. Remove the source of ammunition. Store it on my body. I have also don't have magazines in weird places. For me, I train with my spare mag in this front left pocket. That's how I train. I'm not telling you to do anything. So when I'm out here, I wear these pants and this is just a dump pouch for me. I'm not gonna walk around with three or four magazines. So what I do is system if I take this magazine out, and I haven't put my Neo Mag back in this morning, I put a new one back in there, because that's how I carry my shit, period. Why would I do something different? Make sense? So remove the source of ammunition, store it on my body, cycle, 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 cycle if you need to. I watch that fly out. Is it empty? Yes. Yeah. Slide forward, hammer down, thumb check, holster. So we're all gonna do that. 
We're going to find all kinds of rounds on the ground this weekend. Cost of doing business. It's okay. We're not going to spend a bunch of time chasing. There's going to be $20 of bullets in the grass. Ha, ha, ha. It's okay. Guys, who's carrying appendix? Raise your hand or whoever carries appendix. The one problem with appendix carry is we are violating a safety rule, right? You are pointing a gun at all parts of your body all day long, especially if you sit. Guns are often negligently slash accidentally discharged into people when they're holstering or drawing, period. Statistically speaking, that's about the most dangerous time for most of us to be handling a gun is in and out of the holster. When we're holstering a gun, there's a, maybe a, a 1%, not even a fraction of 1% that you may ever need to quickly holster a gun. Can you guys think of a good scenario where you have to rapidly shove this back in the holster? No. You needed it. You needed it. What do you need a gun for? It's to kill. Yeah, something very bad. Not to kill, but to stop. So I'll stop using that angry language now. We're using a gun to stop some kind of unrighteous violence against us with righteous violence, meaning right, not religious, but right. So if you needed to shoot somebody or something, like a rabid dog or something, that's weird, right? That's weird. I want to be really mindful about it. Shit, this terrible thing just happened. Is there any other terrible things that are happening, right? Am I okay? Are you okay? Okay, do I need to do anything to this? Okay, it's top back up because I just put nine rounds into that guy because that's what those guys train me to do. Now I'll holster. I'm going to breathe because I'm going to be super adrenalized probably. I just did the worst thing I've ever had to do. If I'm a boy, I'm going to put my to the breeze. I'm going to pull my shirt up and I'm going to safely... Ian's just locked on to my... You're sick. <laughs> Avert your eyes. Yeah. Tip to the breeze. Safely holster. <laughs> if I'm here, same thing. I can look... Okay. I mean, think about, just think, this is silly, but think about it. You guys all got eyes and ears on? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, look how easy it is for me to shoot my own foot, the ground, somebody else. Oh, f man, I'm going to be really careful. Slow down. Breathe. It's a good spot to breathe. You just did something very bad. Breath is what controls your heart rate. <sighs> breathe. Tell yourself, breathe. We're gonna get keyed up today. We're all clear now, right? Listen to me, all we're, we're gonna just work some draw strokes. I'm gonna give you a whistle. All that you're doing is presenting your pistol out in front of you, gaining a sight picture. That might be a dot, it might be your sights, and pressing straight to the rear. You're then, if you've got to, here's a problem with dry fire. If I draw my gun a thousand times and I rack the slide after every dry press and go back to the holster, what did I just train? Think about it. You just trained to draw your gun, shoot, and cycle the action. That's why that kind of dry fire is dumb. Really good shooters, like world champions, they press a dead trigger. Don't draw, cycle, press, draw, cycle, press. That's stupid. On the whistle, you are gonna draw, present the pistol out in front of you, get a perfect sight picture, pressure, pressure, pressure on the trigger till it breaks, and then safely recover to the holster after you've reset the slides. Everybody, any questions on that? All right, we are cold. We are cold. Nobody's guns are loaded. Nobody's guns are loaded. Remember? No, you're standing like this right now. This is what you were standing like. Get aggressive. All right, you're back in the holsters. It's okay. No, no. Relax. Feel. I know two or three professional shooters that run this grip like this, where the thumb that's dominant is below this hand. I know two or three guys. I know a thousand that run the gun like this. So the easiest way to build this grip, these thumbs do nothing in shooting. We could cut your thumbs off. They're not pushing on the gun. They're not doing anything. They're just there. In reality, you're just trying to keep them out of the equation. Who remembers the Fonz? You know, hey. So as you're building that grip, building it meaning ingraining what it's supposed to be, thumbs up and out of the way. It's only up and out of the way because I'm making this area available for me to touch it. In order to, in order to create friction, I have to touch it. If I'm here, 
I have no friction. See, all this meat is not on the gun. If that thumb comes out of the way, now all of this meat can go against that grip panel. I have circumferential pressure around the gun. I am a vice of meat in bone in sinew. Understand? Look, look. Questions? Fonz, karate chop, just roll your hand. This is shit you dry fire. You sit there and do this with an empty gun in your basement without alcohol. Don't even press the gun out if this isn't right. Fix it right here, okay. What did he tell me? Thumb up, karate chop. And I can do all this without a bunch of tension in my hands so that I get that set correctly. Feel that? So get it right right here. A couple of you are also having that non-dominant hand hanging out here as you're accessing the gun. Bring it right up. Right now, take your, if you're right-handed, take your left arm and just put it like this on your side. Just do it. And you might come up with your own way. Some guys teach this. This is great because you may be doing this to access your pistol. Yes? Yes. But right now, I know one thing. I'm not going to shoot this. I know something else. It's right where I need to be to press the gun out. So, as this gun as the right hand or left hand for uh, Dan goes to the gun, the left hand comes right here. Yes? yes right here. That's it. Right here. So, one, one. I've got one hand on the gun. Don't draw your guns. Yeah? You understand? Yes. Questions? Comments? No. And we'll keep working through that. No. Guys, I'm going to hand this off to Paul for a minute. Because I feel like what I'm looking at here, there's enough of you that we want to get this draw stroke squared away so we're not getting bad reps. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to start working on uh, building a recoil management mitigation. We'll do it now since we have everybody empty. Okay. It's going to be uh, partner drills, so we're going to work together. So we'll work, uh, one person will be um, actually doing the performing the function or the action. The other person will be coaching you through it with this kind of stuff. The, the, uh, the better we are at coaching others, we become better at coaching ourselves. Make sense? Yes, sir. First thing we want to work on is let's, get, let's take a look at our, posi our body position because the body is going to be what we want to do. We want to put as much body behind the gun as possible. None of these pistols are able to push us around. It's just a pop gun. Later on, we could show you that. Put our hand, thumb behind the slide, press the trigger, nothing happens. I mean, gun goes off, but my thumb doesn't go flying off. Okay, so it's just a pop gun. So that's the first thing is mentally we have to get over the, the fear of what's going to happen when this thing goes off a couple feet away from our face. Make sense? Recoil begins here, like everything else. So managing that recoil and running the gun fast starts up here. Think about the NFL. You have two large mammals crashing into each other at high speeds. How do they stand when they're getting ready to get it on? Right? They got, they got a good three-point stance. They're, they're ready to launch, right? They don't do this. Like you don't see anybody doing that. You don't see anybody taking like a fencing position, anything like that. They're braced for impact and to give impact. So they're set up to impart shock or force on another human being. So that's what we want to do with this pistol, rifle, subgun, shotgun, whatever it is that I'm shooting, I want to be braced up so that I can drive it. Now, out here where we can have kind of a pristine training environment, I'm always going to put my feet, just like Mickey said, if, if somebody said, hey, we're going to race, I'm going to kind of stand like this. Right? I might even exaggerate a little more because we're really going to go. So I want to have my nose out over my toes. I'm forward and I'm up and ready to go. Okay? How many are instructors? Let me ask you that. Okay? How many are known as the gun guy or the fighting guy in your circle? Probably everybody. Right? So who do they go to when they want to know something? The people in your circles that don't know how to shoot, don't know how to fight. They probably call you, right? I can't tell you how many times a week I have somebody who's just a buddy or something like that. Like some dude that'll find you from, you know, on Facebook or whatever from way back in the day. He's like, oh, I see you do that jujitsu. Well, what do you think about Krav Maga? You know, or something, you know what I mean? But because they think you're the expert. So in essence, you are the instructor. So you might have to instruct people or you might have to assist a family member or a friend who doesn't have the ability to do this. Right? Make sense? Think about a population that might not be able to do this. We got a whole bunch of them, man. We got guys that got banged up. We've been at war for however long, 18, 19 years. We've got groups of guys that are in wheelchairs and other situations. So if you can't do this, the next thing you want to think about is I want to crunch my ribs 
into my hips. All right, so I want to kind of crunch down. What's that do? That braces me behind the pistol or behind the weapon. So that braces me up behind the gun. Make sense? So that's the next thing we want to do is we want to crunch ourselves down like that. Then what we're going to do is we want to make it so that our arms don't move, our hands don't move. Okay? Does it make sense? So Z, yeah. the first exercise we're going to do, and I just want you guys to understand, how many here feel like they might not be strong enough to shoot the gun fast? Like you can admit it if you don't, right? Yeah, that's cool. I'm going to show you that you can. You can control this pistol from lifting, right? It's a very simple thing. So if Z and I are standing here, and we're going to shake hands, right? I want you to do this with your partner so you can see it doesn't matter. You have all the strength you need in you already. You guys ever try to put a baby into a car seat or a baby into a high chair? And what happens? They're pretty strong. They don't want to go. So that means that strength's been there since you were a child. You got it in you. It's all tendon stuff, right? So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to take Z's thumb and I'm going to put it right there. I'm going to try to bend his hand backwards and he's not going to let me. Right? I'm going to do it with both hands. He's not going to let me. Is that enough to stop a pistol from doing this? Yeah. Right? Come here. Katie, right? All right. Don't let me bend your hand back. Look. Was I trying pretty hard? Right? Okay. Go again. Both hands, right? Don't let me bend this hand back. Did she take a step back? Her body moved back, but did her wrist bend? No. Is she strong enough? Absolutely. Right? Problem solved, right? So if we can do that, we can keep that gun from going like this. Make sense? Yeah. All right. So that's the first exercise I want you to do because that's one of the first things we're going to work on doing is setting our wrists. We want to have kinesthetic exercises. Make sense? I don't want to just have this esoteric thing of, like Mickey was saying, like one of, one of my first shooting instructors said, uh, 40, 60. So grip the gun with 60% pressure here and 40% here. I was like, I don't have a gauge anywhere in here where I can look at and see if I'm, you know. So what we want to do is we want to have kinesthetic exercises where we kind of know what it feels like to lock all those tendons. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, so that's what we're going to do with that. We're going to do that same exercise again. Just like that, I want you to just take your partner's hand and take turns. So I'm going to try to bend Katie's thumb back to here, right? Like I'm not, don't go fast. Don't be a dick, right? Don't be like a wrist lock type thing. I'm just applying prep. Yeah. And she's locking out and then she's going to do it to me. She's going to, yeah. And I'm just going to lock it out. Make sense? All right, let's go. Grab your partner and let's do it. Grab somebody and shake their hand. Don't let them bend your hand back. Don't let them bend your wrist back. Don't go anywhere. Stay close because we're, we're going to get right back at it. Go back and forth, work on it a little bit. Do it right. Okay, so now, what's the other part of shooting? Right hand, left hand. We're gonna, we're gonna marry the hands on the gun. So I wanna be able to do that with both hands. So we're gonna do the same exercise, left hand, right? Same exercise. I'm gonna just gonna try to bend Z's thumb back into his arm. He's gonna try to bend mine back. Don't even try this one. Impossible. <laughs> All right, so got it? So let's do the same thing, left hand, because the left hand, is it's really the driver, right? So we want to have that left hand locked in. So learn how to lock all this stuff up and don't let it bend. This is magic right here, you guys. Literally, it's magic. Running six shots a second out of the gun and keeping them in a fist-sized group at 10 yards, this is all you're gonna do right here. All right, you guys got it? Makes sense, right? Okay, cool. So go ahead now, and here's what's gonna happen. So we're gonna stay like this, and you guys are like, what's this got to do with shooting a gun? I don't have a gun in my hand. It's got everything to do with it. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is Z's gonna have his hands out as if to shoot. So go ahead and he's gonna extend his hands out. We're gonna get everything else put together here before we start going with the gun in hand. So he's got all that. I'm just gonna try to like just bend that and see what's happening. Nothing. It's locked in. You guys are like, oh, Z's athletic, of course, you know? All right, so same thing. I'm just gonna take my hand here. So I'll see guys demonstrate it like this and I've been in classes where guys do this. And, and that's cool, but that's really not what's happening with recoil, right? So what's happening is it's trying to lift and it's trying to push, especially if you're running fast. It's a steady push back, right? So all I want to do is I want to put my hands right here. So I'm going to do this, doesn't bend, and then I'm going to do this, right? So if I do that, see how he falls forward a little, all right? So all he's doing is he's just kind of doing like a passive forward drive, all right? And it's all coming from here to here. 
right? Also from the feet. So I'm gonna look at his toes, see if his toes come up. Those are coaching cues, right? So I'm looking at his toes, they're staying down and he's driving in, all this is staying tight. If it's, a, if it's same sex and they don't mind you pushing on their chest, because what you wanna think about is pushing your chin into the target or your sternum into the target. That helps with the forward drive. That helps with that passive drive. So what I'll do is I'll go here, right? That's good. Push here, and then I'll let go of the hand, right? And I'll go push with your chest. So I can kind of feel that, or I'll put my hand on their back. And I'll go, yeah, because I can feel their back go forward. Make sense? So based on how people want to be touched, because we're touchy-feely until we're not, right? So. Is it fair to say so it's more of locking the wrist than squeezing it? Yeah, we'll get there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's all going to come together, right? So we're going to lock all that down, driving that in, right? And then, so the exercise is going to be this. Don't let me bend his wrist back, right? And then I'm going to try to push him back and I'll watch his toes and make sure he's driving forward. I'm not rocking back on the Yeah, head. not rocking back, right? And that's all coming from rib to hip. That's the that's the driver there. Because if you're sitting in your car, or you're sitting at lunch or whatever it might be, or, or, you know, God forbid you're in a wheelchair or something like that, you still need to be able to defend yourself. You still need to be able to burn somebody down. Make sense? All right, let's do that now. Grab your partner, let's go through that. Pointing those fingers out like that. Yeah, don't worry about your fingers. Yeah, so you make sure, make sure Dan's wrist doesn't bend. Real quick. There we go. And then I'm gonna push here, right? And then once I get off of that, then I'm gonna put my hand right here just so I can feel that, right? Where he kind of drives in. Yeah, yeah, so tighter. Come on, you're a ranch girl. One thing I do is kind of relax these a little bit. But now, see, I need it loose. Lock it just like that. Lock it so that all right guys ready i know we're going through this quick but it's so we can get you guys we're doing the groundwork so then we can get you gunned up and get you going live right so next thing's going to happen is z's going to drive the gun out or his hands out rather he's driving his hands out now you could do these exercises excuse me anywhere correct like i can do this anywhere I, i've actually done this in hotels and stuff when i'm traveling if i'm traveling to teach jujitsu, sometimes i won't travel with a gun because it's just it's just a hassle you know, so I'll be in the hotel and I can still like on the tabletop or on the dresser or whatever it is, I'll put my hands like this and I'll just push down. So I develop that kind of that force of stopping the lift. Yeah, ow, right? So I'm shutting all that down. So we got this, we got this. What else happens on recoil? So the bullet goes out of the rifle or out of the barrel like this, right? So what's that mean? Equal and opposite means right so when we're doing this so i'm going to push him back a little bit I'm try to bend a little bit and then i'm going to try to move him around like this don't so relax as much as possible don't go like this because if he's all locked in and tight all this stuff's just going to go right so just a nice easy spin yeah just to get him used to that downward crush so that the arms don't move around too much okay so basically we're creating this platform where the pistol or the rifle or whatever it is that we're shooting is just gonna be locked in and can't lift, can't spin out, can't do any of those things. It's not gonna push us around. Does that make sense? Yes. All right, man, let's work on that now. One for one, back and forth. So I'm not straight and locked, I'm getting locked. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to do it with weapon. So here's what we could do now. So this is that new Poly 80 uh, slide I just put on. So I don't know where it is. Man, it's sexy, isn't it? Man, I feel like a better shooter already. So probably am. All right, so slides here. So the pistol is going to do what? Right? Action, reaction. Slide goes back. That creates lift. Correct? So when the slide goes back, that creates that lift. So that's what we're battling. The way we battle that is we put a stop right here. I'm going to put a chalk right here. Put some sort of chalk right here. And then I want to put a chalk right here. All right. Think about this. How many drive trucks or have ever driven a truck or taken like your CDL? All right. When you take your CDL, what do they tell you to do when you park the truck? Chalk the wheels. Chalk the because you can set the brakes hard as you want, but there's still going to be a little creep because gravity is a thing, right? So I can crush all day long and this gun's still going to move around, right? Like I, I don't know if I can do it anymore, but I can grab this thing and just crush it till the, till the frame deforms, right? But it's still 
going to move. But if I put a chalk right here, and I put a chalk right here, it's not going to move. Or it's at least not going to move as much. Make sense? Also, it's going to track. Straight up, straight back. Bless you. You got the Rona? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's what we want to think about. So I want this motion. Remember what we did here? That, locking that wrist. That's this chalk right there. That's chalking that puppy right there. That's not letting that thing move. All right, this motion, same thing on this hand, but it's gonna be the pinky. Because if I lock this part of my hand and don't let it move, the pinky's not gonna move either, right? And where's that pinky? Right there. The other place that I wanna chalk the gun so it can't move. Make sense? I'm gonna take you through it. So what's gonna happen is, is he's gonna hold the gun. I'll let you touch my poly -E. Gent Gently. All right, so I'm gonna get on this side of Z. Okay. He's gonna, can you see what's happening here? Move yourself so you can see if you need to, otherwise you're not getting anything. Yeah, so he's gonna push the pistol out now, gonna drop his left hand off, right? And because we're gonna learn to isolate first, so like a chain, like a, like a chain, right? Strengthen all the links, the chain's stronger, correct? So I'm gonna strengthen all the links. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up underneath right here, and I'm just gonna try to do this. Basically what I'm doing is that. I'm trying to mimic the motion of the slide going backwards creating that energy right there and he's not letting me bend it now we got to know how to tr press the trigger correct while maintaining this level of tension in our joints and connective tissue and all that good stuff so what i want to do is i'm going to do that and then let it go i'm going to tell him consciously maintain that pressure and press the trigger go ahead and press all the way through yep gotta see my side let me see your sights. Just throw rounds everywhere. Scare them off. All right, so there. So lock it down again. Don't let me move the gun. All right, press the trigger. Good. All right, lock it down. Don't let me move the pistol. Press the trigger. Got it? So we're just doing it right hand only for our first exercise. I want you to do five reps each. So five reps each, just like that. Now, what's happening for me? What am I learning? All the performance points of this particular technique or approach to running a gun. Correct? Just making, just making sense? Yes. Makes sense? Because yes. I'm talking him through it. What am I doing to my brain? I'm programming my supercomputer to remember these performance points when it's my turn to run. All right, one more time. Right, we'll see where I'm at. Right? I'm not out here. I'm right here. My hand is right here on his shoulder if need be. All right? When we go live, I want you to put your hand on his shoulder. I'm right here. Don't let me move the gun. Lock this. Good. Drive that. All right. Press the trigger. Good. Lock it down. Don't let me move it. And press the trigger. Got it? Yes, sir. Makes yes, sense? Yes. All right, man. Listen up real quick. Um, will you feel some fatigue from doing this? Yes. Yeah. Right? Like I tell people in jujitsu, CrossFit, whatever it is, if, you know, when I was working as a personal trainer, I would tell people all the time, you're going to feel fatigue welcome that right instead of having the mindset of you know this sucks so bad have the mindset of this is awesome this is what habituation adaptation feels like this is what it feels like when i'm changing myself right so start thinking that way that way you'll welcome the fatigue rather than dread the fatigue make sense because yes. you never know when you're going to need to have that mind every time we do something like that it's another deposit into our mindset bank account that you never know when you might have to draw upon. So everything you do, do mindfully, do consciously, so that when the day comes, you got a big old fat roll. So here's what I want you guys to do. The person who's on the line, who's gonna work first, I want you to go ahead and present the pistol to the target. So go ahead and bring the pistol out, drive into the target. All right, got it. Okay, now the person that is next to you that's going to be your coach, go ahead and put your hand on their shoulder. If they're a right-handed shooter, you're going to be on their right side. All right? Now, right-handed shooters, drop your left hand off of the pistol, and you're going, to, you're going to manage this pistol with just your right hand. It's, it's doable. We've already seen it, right? Everybody here was able to keep your hand locked, and nobody could bend your, your hand back, so we're good. All right? You're plenty strong. All right, so here's what I want you to do. You're gonna bring your hand around front, just like I did with, uh, with Z. You're gonna bring your hand around front, just like this, right? 
and you're just going to try to push that basically just like we did with the handshake drill bend their hand back once they can lock that down then you're going to tell them to go ahead and press the trigger when they press the trigger they want to maintain that same tension that same feeling as they press the trigger so they get used to running the gun like this make sense Yes. All right, let's do it. Five reps. If one of you does not get it, just raise your hand. Yeah, I, I want you to get it, man. So if something doesn't make sense, tell me. It's not your fault. It's fine. My communication skill. Yeah, it helps to start it. Beretta, get that thumb up. What's the trigger? My observation? Yes. Unless you really shoot that tight. I don't hold it tight enough. Just, you know, give it that little give. But you can't be death gripping the trigger and that's real people for it. Alright, let's go back. I gotta get used to it. Alright, so see how you're leaning back? Yep. Drive. Hey guys, remember, stand like you're gonna fight. Stand like you're gonna fight. Don't lean back. Keep your body behind the gun. Keep okay. How'd that feel? Everybody good to go? Okay, cool. So <clears throat> we're doing this really quick, kind of moving through it. Ordinarily, we would take about an hour or two just on this um, because you can never spend enough time on the fundamentals. And and when it's time to get rocking and rolling, you want to keep that dot or that sight where you need it. Where you need the rounds to go and you want to be as efficient as possible about doing that and the only way to do that is just uh i think it was max michelle on mickey's podcast that talked about just his uh his practice routine is pretty kind of rudimental or fundamental not a lot of fancy stuff but guess who's a winner you know world champion more than anybody yeah so that's what it comes down to right who executes the fundamentals at the highest level under resistance so that's what we want to do so next up now, we've done it with our right hand. We're going to do the same exact exercise, but with our left hand running the trigger. Now, why might it be important to do that with your left hand? Yeah, right? So if you have to shoot with your left hand, you know how to shoot with your left hand. Another thing happens when we start running the gun left-handed is that anybody ever have injuries to their right hand and you have to shoot left-handed for a while and then you come back to shooting regular again, you're like, holy cow, man. Like, rifle's not moving, you know? And what happened was your left hand had to take a more dominant role, you woke that bad boy up. All right, so it's kind of like if, you know, if you got to brush your teeth with your left hand for a month because of an injury or something, that first couple of days, man, you're about to put an eye out with that toothbrush, right? By the end of the month, there's really no difference. So that's what we want to do. So well, we- Plus, as you're, practicing, as you're practicing with your off hand, you're less confident with that hand, right? So how much more do you focus on what you're doing? So that drives that point home a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah, so because we want to lock all this, and so learning how to do that with the gun in the left hand helps. Because when we, we go back to it's going to be easy. When you go live with both hands on the gun, it's going to be easy now. Z's going to have the pistol in his left hand, so that means I'm going to be on the left side of his body. Correct? So I'm going to be on the left side. My hand's going to be by his shoulder. That way I don't, I don't get out here in front of the muzzle. Same exact exercise. I'm going to come up underneath, and I'm going to try to bend that back, right, and then press the trigger. Right? I'll cycle the side for him. Don't let me bend your hand back. Keep that locked. And press the trigger. Good. And then lock it down. Don't let me bend your wrist back. And press the trigger. Got it? All right, that's what we want. Make sense? Yes. All right, guys, let's do it. Same rotation again. Four or five reps on each person. I'll come help you. Never mind, she's got you. There you go. How are you standing, Ryan? What do you mean? Like, are you? Would you fight me standing like that? How would you? If you're gonna fight me right now, yeah, right? Yeah. So I'm standing in front of you, and I'm like, bro, yeah, how yeah. would you stand? Weird tension, right? Hey guys, what's your non-dominant hand doing? Some of you guys have weird contorted shit with your non-dominant or the not the non-hand that's being involved. Do something with it. Hook a pocket. Lay it to your belly, make a fist and draw it to your sternum. Don't just put, have it in some weird, twisted position at your side. Shooting is a pleasurable experience 
if you do it well. And by doing all this dry work, our live fire work is more fun. We can do more adventurous things. We can have more fun with it because you guys are able to keep the rounds where you want them to go rather than you guys press a couple rounds off, look at the target, and are like, I hate shooting. I'm not good at it. But this is how we get good at it, and then it's more fun. Like any skill we do, right? We're going to do it with both hands on the gun, but I'm going to jump ahead a little bit with you guys. And we're going to go ahead and add in the next step of uh, mitigating recoil. So he's going to drop his left hand off. I'm going to get to the right. I'm going to do this one more time because I'm going to hide that rep in there. Get him to reconnect with that. Make sure that that ground gets covered one more time. A little more of that. What's it called? Yeah, there's a scientific word for it. My lantern or something. But I want to make that thicker, that connection between myelin. myelin. I want to make that connection thicker between the, the nerves and the brain and all that good stuff. So we're right in here gonna go one more layer across there and now right I'm gonna push back on him a little bit and watch his toes there we go so I'm gonna try to do this and I'm gonna push back and I'm gonna tell him to drive into me don't let your toes grab the ground with your toes all right press the trigger now when I take my hand off the gun he's driving 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 right don't do that because it's funny and all that good stuff until his hand goes like this and we're live and he puts an extra hole in your foot Right, so be cool. So don't let me bend your wrist. Let me push you back. I'm watching the toes. Don't let the toes come up. Good, contract from here to here. Good, and press the trigger. There it is. One more time. Don't let me bend your back. Don't let me push you. I'm watching his toes. There it is. Oh, he jumped the gun. I, like, I got my sight picture. Gotta grab it. All right, make sense? All right, so what are we working on now? We're working on the flip, right? Shutting that down, but what else is happening? Yeah, if you're running an AR, what's going on with that bolt? Ding, 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 ding in your ear, right? That buffer's bouncing around. You're running a pistol, what's happening? Right? So now we are training ourselves kinesthetically. We're building awareness of what's going on in our body that we need to do to make the gun stay here. All right, so a couple mental pictures. Push your sternum into the target or push your chin. Matt Burkett. In one of his classes, he told us, push your chin into the target. That way you don't drop your head. Because what will happen is guys will do this. Right? And that's not the best way to see the sight, sight system. So push your chin into the target. That keeps your face up. So you're using the full visual, you know, as, as much of your visual capacity as possible. Another way to think about it is, um, is I want to feel like you can feel like I'm trying to push the gun down into the ground. Like the gun's trying to lift off. And I'm trying to like push it down, trying to like root it into the ground. Make sense? Either one of those seems to work for folks as far as making some sort of connection. Got it? Okay, wrist, push. Let's go. Grab your partner. Five reps each. Switch back and forth. Let's knock it out. 10 -0 -5. You guys be patient. Like I said, when we go live, it'll be more fun. And we're gonna go live in a little bit. Are you guys seeing the sights as you're doing this or are you just pressing the trigger? To yes or a no? Sights. Sights. Are you seeing sights. your sights or dot? Yes. How are they aligned? Yes. Equal height, equal light? Yes. Because that's all part of these repetitions. All right, everybody getting it? Okay, here's the deal. You already know the exercise. So as soon as you get done with the right hand and you've changed positions, changed uh, places, switch up, left hand only. Same exercise, left hand only. Lock it down. Don't let them push you back. Don't let them move you around. Keep it locked down. <laughs> a little, little toe lift. Let's do it again. Yo. All right, so as soon as you guys get done with your last of the five. Go ahead and holster up, and we're going to go both hands on the gun. We're going to kind of jump ahead, so I'll let you guys go live in a minute. Have some fun. 
died. All right, you guys ready? All right, so here's what's going to happen. We're going to go both hands on the gun, but first we're going to do one more completely dry exercise, no gun in hand. All right, so here's what's going to happen. Z's going to have his left hand out, right? And he's going to turn it just as if to push the pistol, just as if he were driving the pistol. One of the things like Mickey was talking about with your thumbs on the side of the bore line, what's that, what's that indicate to you? Wherever my thumb goes, the round should go, correct? If my thumb is in line with the bore line, wherever I'm pointing. So here's another thing about the skies and reps. Every time you get on an elevator, you do that, you just push the bore line. Every time I ring somebody's doorbell or anything like that, you know, if I'm trying to annoy somebody, I'm just pushing my bore line, right? So, but that's the bore line of your pistol for both hands, correct? All right, so always get those reps in when you can. Now, his pinky, right, is what needs to lock down the front strap, correct? So we've been doing all this kind of stuff. We're gonna do a little exercise with isometric tension. And what I want him to do is he's gonna pull back with his shoulder through the pinky. So I'm gonna lock this in, I'm gonna pull, and he's gonna pull back. Yeah, right? So I'm gonna get right here. He's gonna lock all this down and he's gonna pull back with his shoulder. And I'm just gonna to try to pull him and see how he's locking this down. If he can do that, he can lock down the front strap of a pistol, regardless of the caliber, it's not gonna lift. Make sense? Because again, we're using the bigger joints and muscles rather than the smaller joints and muscles. Make sense? All right, so it's a little more efficient. All right, so let's do that now. Get your thumb out there or your left hand out and your partner's just gonna get in front of you. He's gonna grab that, that pinky just like that. He's just gonna pull and I want you to consciously pull back with your shoulder. But think about pulling through the pinky. All right, let's do it. Think about using your shoulder. Think about using your shoulder to pull the pull back on the pinky. You do it like a fist instead of flat. So keep your hand as if you were gripping a pistol. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody getting it? You're going to bring the pistol out and you're going to marry your gun, your hands together around the gun, you're going to create that wrap that Mickey was talking about around the pistol. I want you to go ahead and extend out and now what I want you to do is I want you to, your coach is going to take you through the entire series that we just did with the pistol out with both hands on the gun. Empty gun, right? And I'm going to be right here. I'm going to try to bend the wrists. Wrists aren't bending, right? I'm going to try to push him back a little bit, right? And then I'm going to tell him, pull back with your left shoulder through your pinky, right? And then press the trigger, right? I'm going to cycle slide for him. Work it one more time, try to bend the wrist. Don't let me bend your wrist. Don't let me push you back. A little push pull with your shoulders and press the trigger. Good. And then cycle the slide. Hmm. I'll set it. <laughs> All right, ready? One more time. Again. Yeah, right. There we go. Don't let me bend it. Right. Don't let me push you back. And push pull with the shoulders and press the trigger. Good. Make sense? Okay, so that's what we want to do now, right? About five or six reps. Be patient. We are about to go live. It's about to get fun. Be cool. All right? All right, let's go. Check, 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 check. Check it, check it. Fly to the moon. Out. Three solid reps. Hit all the performance points. Lock the gun down nice and tight. Do not let that gun move. Keep it locked down. All right, are we ready? When I tell you to, we're going to go ahead and load and make ready. All right, so when I tell you to, 
I'm gonna bring the pistol out just like Mickey already took you through the loading process, right? Bring the pistol out, elbows in, gun up here, right? Where you can see everything, see what you're doing. Magazine in, however you manipulate the slide, verify that it's loaded, and I want you to holster and stop there. Make sense? Yep, sir. All right, as soon as I'm off the line. What's that? Everybody at the same time. Yeah, everybody up on the line. All right, go ahead and load and make ready. We're gonna walk you through it, remember? Present that pistol to the berm, lock the slide to the rear. Visually and if needed, physically inspect the gun. Is it in good condition? Grab that magazine with a good index. Remember? Remember? That's you. That means you. Yes. If you've already done it, run that slide forward. Now's a good time to get a press check out of the way. Get a press check in there. Keep the guns out. All right, holster up when you're ready. When the gun is ready to go, holster. Right, so we're at the three yard. So remember guys, at the three yard line, marksmanship matters, but right now we're focusing on one specific aspect, right? So it's a set principle, right? Specific adaptation to imposed demand. So what I am demanding of Z is maximum recoil mitigation. Okay? If we wanted to work on marksmanship, that would be a different thing, correct? So don't get spun up about, oh, I'm only three yards away. Of course, you know, I got a good group or whatever. We could do this without the targets. Because what's going to tell you if you're managing recoil per correctly? What's going to tell you that? Your sight picture. Yeah, your sight picture is not going to move. If I can see the dot or the front post just pulsate, guess who's rocking and rolling? All right, so one hand on the gun. He's going to drop his left hand off, right? Because we want to challenge ourselves. I'm going to come up underneath. It's important now to do this correctly because we are live. My left hand's on his shoulder. If you guys can't see, yeah, my left hand is on his shoulder. My right hand comes up underneath. I don't go like this. I don't go like this. I come underneath, right to his hands. Just like that, I'm going to try to bend his wrist back, and I'm going to try to push him back. Don't let him do either. Don't let me bend the wrist. Don't let me push him back. I'm going to take my hand off, go fire one. All right, there we go. I'm watching this. I'm not watching the target. Other thing you could do is I could pick a spot on the other side of the pistol and see if it interrupts my line of vision. That means the gun's lifted too much. Make sense? All right, so don't let me bend your wrist. Don't let me push you back. Don't let me move around. Fire one. Good, holster up. We're gonna do that for 10 rounds. Just like that, one at a time. Make sense? Yes, sir. All right, why do we need to do it that way? Muscle memory. Correction, right? Quickly correct mistakes. All right. What did Darwin say about survival of the species? Survival of the fittest. Survival of the most adaptable. It's the survival of the most adaptable. The most adaptable is the one that can most quickly correct a mistake before it's fatal. Or it becomes a design flaw that gets passed down. So we want to do these one at a time, only for now. Right? Because I, I can't have you do this, right? So I can't have you go like this. Okay, good, right? I can't have you like, just like, what just happened? I don't know. I don't really remember much anything. It was just loud for a second. That makes sense? So I want to be able to lock the gun down right there. The gun doesn't move. Gun doesn't move. Make sense? So that's what we're trying to work on, is the ability to immediately correct myself as I'm going. So I'm always learning. Make sense? Yes. All right. All right, as soon as we Z and I are off the line. Yes, sir. Finish. As soon as Z and I are off the line, we're gonna do that exercise. One round at a time, 10 rounds, then switch. Make sense? All right. Self-correct, coach is correct. Let's go, when you are ready, at your speed, go to work. Let's go. Right. Nice and easy. Okay. All right, going hot.
Hat Point Target, our preferred mobile target stand. Super lightweight polymer, the designer of this product. Uh, used to work in the automotive industry, so he knows what he's doing. The polymer is uh, not only super light, but it's super durable. And if it does happen to get shot by an errant round, it won't crack, it just punches a clean hole. We've got good shooters. I actually don't have one that's been shot. He just told me. Three different locations for different target widths. These are friction fit. And as I said, we've been demoing these for over a year. They work fantastic. So totally sturdy. One by two fits in there. If it's windy, breezy, you can either put a weight here or they supply some long railroad type spikes, landscape spikes. You can just push them right through into the ground, pound them in, whatever you got to do. Works fantastic, super lightweight, and not going to rust, rot, or anything like that. Hat point targets. Damn, the cool. Remember what I told you about it just being a pop gun? Watch! It's just a pistol, man. You want my thumb is? Did it go flying off any? Like, did it die? Did you die? Right? <laughs> Empty casing comes out. Point is, this gun should not be able to push you around. It's just not that powerful. You are way stronger than this thing is. Alright? Like, don't make me break out the, the conversation about how you descended from people that kill big hairy beasts with little pointy sticks. Right? Like, that DNA is flowing through you. Act like it. Right? Like, you're a badass. Act like it. Grab this thing. It's just a mechanical thing. Dominate. Okay? Alright, so, right hand only. What's that mean now? Left hand. Left hand. Left hand. Same drill. Left hand only. Ten rounds. Got it? I don't have 10 rounds in my gun. Well, you'd have to reload then. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a problem we can solve. What happens when we shoot live with the left hand is that this is going to wake up our left hand. Make it take a more dominant role rather than just always just being the support hand. Okay? All right, guys. Let's go to work. Up on the line. Odds first. Let's go. Guys, if your gun goes empty and you're going to fire 10 rounds, what has to happen? You got to reload, right? 10 rounds and then switch. So odds, fire your 10 rounds, coached. Every single round is coached. And then switch, evens are on. 10 rounds, every single round is coached, right? Think about the benefit of that. How often do you have every single round, every single trigger press is coached? That's pretty awesome, right? So let's take advantage of it. Make it a, a learning experience where we can kind of exponentially push ourselves up higher, right? But, all right think about it this way. You have an athlete come in who trains in group classes, does pretty well, trains for six months. You have another athlete comes in, trains group classes for six months, but also gets personalized instruction once a week. Who's going to be better at the end of that six months? Exactly. The guy with the private, private instruction, the personalized instruction, because his game is being tailored and coached specifically to him, rather than a generic trap the leg, trap the arm, hand on the hip, look away, bridge up and over. But if I individually can take time and work with somebody, I can adapt that technique specifically to their strengths and weaknesses. And that's what you got the opportunity to do right here, right now. Got it? Hey, so if you're coaching, coach. Even if you feel like that person knows more than you, just go through exactly what Paul told you to do. All right, I check it. All right, checking, wrist not bending, moving around. All right, I'm looking at his toes, checking everything. All right, once I feel like he's got a stable platform, everything's good. Press the trigger, right, and tell him. It's not, not because I know more than him or I'm out instructing them. You're just going through the procedure that Paul told you to do. So you're also relaying that information to them. You're helping them practice. Yeah, you're doing it for yourself too, right? Right, because ultimately we are our own self. So we have to self-coach. Ultimately we are our own coaches, correct? So might as well learn how to do it, man. All right, let's go. Let's go to work.
That's it, both sides, right? We're, we're trying to bend his wrist. Don't let me bend the wrist. We're locking all this in. Pinky's pulled up and tight, right? Don't let me push you back. Now give me a little push pull between the shoulders. Send three. One, two, three. Down. Let me push you back. Don't let me move you around. Send four. Lock it down. Let me push you backwards. Don't let me move you around. A little tension between the shoulders. Push pull. Six. Who said they'd be mad? All right, ready? So I know he's running the clock 19, so I know we're getting near to the bottom of the mag, right? So what should we do now? We're just gonna dump the rest. So I'm gonna do this. So don't, don't bend your wrist, don't move you around. I'm gonna push you back, give me a little push pull between the shoulders, and lock your slide back, go. Good, all right, magic. All right, makes sense? You guys see how that works? If, you're, if your gun goes to slide lock, reload like you would reload. Dump the mag straight to the ground. It doesn't do you any good in your gun. Go through the reload process properly. Understood? Yes. All right, so you guys got it? Yeah. All right, so what are we doing now? Now we're diving into the recoil mitigation side of it uh, over multiple strings or multiple rounds during a string, right? So rather than just firing one, having time to assess, run through my checklist, all right, what did I need to do? What didn't I do? What should I do? That's, we're past that now. So now I want you to just lock it down, dominate that gun, don't let it move, and just press the trigger as many times as they tell you to. All right? Do not, don't do this, right? Eyes and ears, don't do this. So your coach says, send three, don't do this. All right? Am I, am I mitigating recoil when I do that? Am I testing myself rather? No, no right? Testing myself would be this. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm learning to go beyond my perceived limits so that I understand what I'm capable of. Make sense? If you never push yourself over that edge, I don't know where the edge is, man. Fire walking tonight, bitches. Yeah, you're living your life like a bitch, right? So step up over that edge and see where you start to fall apart. You might surprise yourself though. That's the other side of this. You might surprise yourself and realize, oh wow, I've been holding myself back for so long. I could have been running harder. I could have been doing better. But I've been holding myself back because of some range rule or, or whatever it is, preconceived uh, perception of myself and, and my abilities. Make sense? We want to figure that out here. Right? All right, on the three, odds are up first. Two hands on the gun. Coach, dictate the pace of fire. If they go slow, make them go faster. Two. How many feel like you went as fast as you could possibly go? And still keep rounds on target. All right, so we're gonna do an exercise. Let me do this. How important is trigger control? 
Barry. Okay, cool. Z, come on up. Z's gonna lock the gun out. He's gonna lock it down and get ready to rock and roll. Here's what's gonna happen. No, finger off trigger. He's gonna lock everything down. I'm gonna run the trigger for him. Ready? Yeah. So he's gonna lock all this down. Don't we push you around. Don't move it back. Lock it back in there. Ready? I see where my thumb is. Who was pressing the trigger? You were. Did you guys all see what just happened? Yeah, all right, let's do it again. Yeah. Ready? He's going to lock it out. Watch what's going to happen. Oh. Now, I'm not going to just sit up. I could do this, right? So lock the saw down. And push back. Don't let it move around. Ready? Lock it down. Don't move around. Don't push back. Ready? My thumb stays away from the slide. My finger goes in the trigger. Did we miss the target? No yeah. bullets. Yeah, right? No I bullets. Had to go through the process. Oh, dang. Sorry. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Did trigger control matter? No. no. Is that to say that trigger tr control never matters? No. no. Of course not. But what we are saying is, at certain distances and certain times, to get to, to your highest level of performance, you might need to focus less on trigger, more on grip, and locking things down. Okay? So. To get past that mental hurdle, what we're going to do is, you're going to do exactly what I just did to Z. Your thumb is going to be down low on the, the pivot point of the wrist, right? If so you can't see, position yourself so that you can see what's happening. So we're going to go through all the exercises we just did, right? Don't want to push around, I'm going to move around, I'm going to wrist, I'm going to push back. My thumb's going right there, and then I'm going to press the trigger. Why do I put my thumb, my hand on his hand to press the trigger? Right, so I don't do this. Okay, don't ask me how I know. Okay, so don't do that. So I want to be right here, my thumb's right here, and I'm going to press that trigger for him. So the two things, he understands that he can lock that gun down, so all he has to focus on is locking it down and watching the slide and the sight cycle. That's all he's got to worry about. The other thing that it teaches him is you can go faster. Make sense? Yes, yep. All right, let's do it. Odds on the line, evens, you're coaching, you're working the trigger. Communicate to each other. I'm watching some of you guys, you're just going through this running rounds. This is how, this is, you are now doing like the highest level shit people do with guns in training right now. Manipulating somebody else's gun. Communicate with each other verbally, visually, whatever you have to. Nod, make sure that you're paying attention to each other. Yes? Yeah, make sure. Make sure we're communicating. Also, that's coaching, right? Yeah. So it gives you an opportunity to coach, so you get a chance to go through all the cues again for yourself as well, correct? correct. Okay, guys, odds that are on the line, ready to shoot, go ahead, make ready. Coaches get set. From here on, you're working on your own pace. Go to work. Holster up. Holster up. If you're off the line, track your mags. Gun stays in the holster. Do you feel like this was beneficial at all? Do you feel like you have? Do you feel like you have better recoil mitigation, or at least have a plan to work towards better recoil mitigation? Probably better than what I was given when I first started shooting, which was grip it hard. You know, I was like, you don't think I wasn't? You know? So. Uh, so yeah, so we're gonna go through one more mag. I want you to go through with your coach now. Now that you understand, you can probably run the trigger faster. The trigger, the, the, the smooth press back and then flip to release probably isn't as important at this range as much as just putting it on.
right? As fast as possible, as accurately as possible. I, I kind of think of it as the equivalent of like a, a load of buckshot hitting him right in the chest. Damn. Eight rounds in like a little less than a second or a little over a second, it's possible, it's doable, right? So eight rounds right there would probably be at least a plan changer, if not a game changer, <laughs> all right? So think about that. Now also think about what Farnham talks about. You guys know who John Farnham is, right? So defense training is, yeah. So look up John Farnham, he's an old school dude, but he always, he made a good point in one of his classes. This is not much greater than this, correct? So what's the difference in this and this, or that group here or that group here? What's the difference? My head has been trained since the police academy that a headshot needs to be slowly, carefully made. Right? Two to the body, come up to the head. Right? We're talking 90s, right, at the police academy. Bullshit! Two to the body, come up to the head for one, carefully. And there was a, actually a cadence that we were taught, which was quickly, carefully. And then Farnham's like, if you can dump six rounds right here in under two seconds, and keep them in a fist-sized group, that's the that's their face. Probably a fight stop. Make sense? Yes, sir. Amen. Right. It's all about un unplugging those limitations. Correct? Okay. Odds, you are on the line. Odds, you will be shooting. You will be running the mag. Evens, you will be taking them through the cues and dictating their pace. They aren't allowed to shoot anything less than four rounds at a time. Make sense? How many mags? You have 18 round mags? We'll do three. Uh, three mags have per one guy. Three rounds four, per guy. Three, Listen. Three, mags. Three, three, yeah. Three mags. Three mags per iteration. So when you're on the line, you're going to run yourself through three mags. So you have 24, anywhere from 24 to 36 opportunities to, to, to bolster your confidence that you can successfully index and drive this pistol into their chest or face. Make sense? Yes, sir. <coughs> Is the shooter running the trigger this time? No. Shooter's running the trigger. Yeah, you are. Yeah, the shooter's going to run the trigger. The purpose of the other exercise was to do what? Mitigate recoil. Yeah. yeah, mitigate, focus completely on recoil and also disengage our marriage to trigger control is also always paramount. Sometimes it's not, and that's okay. Right? Robbie Latham says what? Index is the most important part. Everything else comes after that. Index first. Make sense? Yeah. All right, guys. Odds on the line. Let's do this. Go ahead. Coaches, get set. Eyes and ears look left and right.
Seven rounds. Let me try. Yeah. Alright, set the trigger. So I can do Four. Alright, stay good. Right. 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 Four. Four. Right. 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 As much as you can. There. Yeah, that hand is wrapped up. Now, just let the thumbs lay. Point at the target with the thumbs and see your sights. Mickey, you're going to cost me money on this? Ready? Four. Hold that hand right. Fingers up. Thumbs pointed gently towards the target. Sights. Has everybody gone? Sights. Trigger ready. Grip still good, right? Mm -hmm. right, draw your board. Draw your board. All right, everybody got it. Brandon yeah. brought up a good point, which is sometimes if, like, if your hands are hurt, right? If your hands are busted up, like I've had a boxing fracture on this hand, so you know where you get the, like that triangle on the back, and so you can see the scars and stuff where my hands are put back together. That kind of stuff happens. Does that all of a sudden negate my right to to life? My no. my right to defend myself, no. right? So as coaches. And as trainers and as self-coaches, we have to figure out how to work around. So that's when I really started figuring out what the pinky's all about with this, right? So eyes and ears, I want to show you one thing. Watch. One I last thing, right? So watch. Watch the gun, not the target. Okay, watch. So I'm not I'm not doing teacup, right? I'm not Sabrina, but I'm holding right there. I'm just gonna put my hand right there. Watch. Did the gun sit nice and flat? Yes. Yeah. What was I doing? Countering the leverage. Chalking. Chalking it up, man. So, did that involve a lot of grip strength? Yeah. No, sir. No, right? I just had my fingers like this on my pinky. I'm just getting in front of what I know needs to lift, and I'm chalking it. Mm -hmm. So, if you can't squeeze, right? So, think about this. Like, my hand's just been fixed. I got to go back to work. First thing they want me to do before I go back to work is I gotta qualify. So I gotta go down and shoot like 50 rounds. Yeah. I mean, it's police qualification, so you do it in your sleep. Corey, but the point is, when it's time to shoot like that, it became yeah. crucial that I could do this, make like a C with my hand, and pull back with my shoulder against the bottom of that front strap, and that kept the gun flat. Make sense? Yeah. All right, so even if you're hurt, you still will be able to defend yourself. You'll still be able to run the gun at a high level. No doubt about it. Any questions? Yeah. No questions? Okay, cool. Gun stay in the holster, charge up your magazines, get back out here, and then Mickey's gonna get run us through some. Let's go, top them off. Let's go. Eyes and ears? Eyes and ears. So my gun just went empty, right? That's a slide lock reload. Yes? Yes. If I just shot a bunch of these rounds, ba 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 ba, I can retrieve a fresh magazine and do this, right? What's that called? Tack reload or tack mag, as Z likes to call it. I can do that. I'm dominating the muzzle. I'm deciding when to reload. He just had me shoot 15 rounds. I might only have one left in the pipe. He just had me shoot eight rounds. I've got a tiny gun. Fetch a new magazine. Look, drop that one that's in the gun into your hand. I'm not discarding this. There's ammo in it. Put it in your back pocket. Have a plan where it's going. We'll work through it. All right, let's do this. I'm gonna give you two numbers. First number goes in the body, the second number goes in the head, period. I'll demo it once, check it out, watch me. Watch me, watch me, I'm gonna go whistle. Look. Safely he holds it, I'll say four, four and two. I don't like that, I don't like that lever. Four and two. I just shot a bunch. I'm gonna tack mag. Yeah? What'd you say?
from the hip, bitches. Well, you guys got to sit back here and make fun of me. We cool? We cool? I told you to watch out for Drew. He will break your shit. I've seen it happen. <laughs> that was awesome. It's my friend. You shut up. Ready? Hey. This is this is just getting reps in. On the whistle. Two and one. Safely recover to the holster when you're done. Four and two. Five and two. Z just said it, Z just said it. Did I hit, did it work? That's an old school range-ism. But tell yourself, did I hit, did it work? Is he down, does he have any friends? Six and six, six and six. That's more than the capacity of my blaster. Figure it out. Run down range, paste any misses that are outside of, now listen, before you paste them, I want you to count them. So look, I shot first on this target or this one. I had this, I think that was the first round I fired, so I owe five. Count them and then paste the misses. So then you, go, you guys, any of your sins, go pay for them back behind the 10 yard line so the other line can get up and do their bit of business. Paste them and then get out of there. Roll back so that the other line can get in. Let's go. Let's. You guys have clean targets. That means any sins, we know that are you. Your transgressions will be laid bare. We're running it, boys. We're running it. Listen to me. When you finish, pause with your gun out. And all of you listen to me. Pause after your three rounds. Ready? Listen, with that gun out, with that gun out, listen. Did I hit? Did it work? Did I hit? Did it work? Do I need to shoot again? Did I hit? Did it work? Say it. Do it again, two and one, ready? Make it up, Tom. Stop, fix that grip. Thumb up, drive this hand up. This piece of meat up. This up. Take this up higher on the gun, just this. Yeah. Give me one. Reload, reload. Did I hit? Did it work? Does he need another? Four in two. What's out there? Six in three. How many down there? How many are you about to do? You know what I'm not hearing? Did I hit? Did it work? Does he need another? Six and six.
Jeff, look at that index finger. Show me a good grip. Show me a good grip. Show me a good grip. Don't shoot. Just mount the gun. Nope. So just go slow, brother, until, you're, until that grip's burned in. Don't go faster than you can steer what's happening. Listen up. All your guns holstered? Yes. Yes. Scoop your gear. We're swapping the line. If you've got misses, paste them. Where's my other line? Get back up. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. That means now. Target 11's got a couple misses that need pasting. Anything that's not in that box. Come on. Let's go, fellas. Come on, we've got one more thing to get through. And then we're going to double time up for lunch. Lunchy time. Super simple. We're all going to just take one step to the right as we draw. So without firing, everybody's on the line. Without firing. Couple things. You have a target in front of you. There's a number on it. Katie's is eight. When Katie steps to the right, she's still shooting target eight. Understood? We're not going to get super athletic right now, but we're just going to make sure that you can link together your feet, your eyes, your hands. We'll go into this later, but I just want to start linking your feet together without shooting. I'm going to give you a whistle. Draw. Just take a step and draw and present your pistol out and then recover to the holster and stay where you're at to the right. And then I'll have you go back to the left. You understand? Breathe, breathe. Katie, fix that grip. That left hand was, that finger was dangling in the breeze. Safely recover to the holster. Stay where you is. Safely recover to the holster. Going to the left. Good job, Tom, on that holster. I saw that, bro. Ready? Going to the left. No fire, no fire. Feel good? Going live, going live. I'm going to tell you how many rounds. Ready? Going to the right. Go into the left. <laughs> Guys, as you're manipulating those guns, where should your trigger finger be? High register. When you're coming out of the holster, when does your finger go on the trigger? Is there ever a good time, like an excuse, to point a gun at yourself? Yeah, you literally can train really good movements. Z will tell you it could happen. He's seen it, seen it happen when shit gets crazy. But do you train to that standard? No. You train to the standard of excellence, and if shit goes a little sideways, you've trained in redundancies. So a couple of you are drawing and stepping over your leg. That gun is coming out and going towards the target away from you. Go the other way. Go back to the right. Z, would you demo it, please? Watch Z. Watch Z. Watch Z. Ready? Go to the right, Z. The point, you just point is safe muzzle control, good recovery to the holster when you're done. Okay. Mindful. Mindful. It's not about fast or slow. It's about having a reason. Going to the right. Two to four rounds. Derek, you drug that gun in faster than you drew it. You Compress that thing in like it was on fire. Did I hit? Did it work? Think about this. Who loves somebody? Who loves somebody? So think about you're here for that somebody. You're here for that somebody. If I drag that gun in too fast, that somebody could die. If that somebody's you, if you're a selfish son of a bitch, that's still okay. Pay attention. Did I hit? Did it work? Me dragging this gun in, I have two law enforcement friends that both were shot after they killed the bad guy. Guess what? He wasn't dead. And one of them had completely reholstered. The next thing you know, he was getting hit in his chest. Body armor, luckily. Good catch, Derek. Good catch. Sorry, Corey. Did I hit? Did it work? Hey, might you need a tack mag before you recover to the holster?
Hey guys, what's important in this process right out of the gate? You got to identify what you're shooting at. You got to get a good master grip that we just worked on all morning on the gun. So before you even start whacking on that trigger, what happens if we don't have the good grip? What do we already figure out? Yeah, so in, if it requires you to kind of go slow and get everything lined up how you want it and inspect it, do that. We didn't say shoot as fast as you can. Let's go the other way. Move your ass, Jack. All right, all right, all right. So one more time, one more time. One more time, you ready? Going to the right. <laughs> Jeff, are you shooting an FS? Yeah. That's why you got that safety issue there. All right, fine, one more time, going to the left. I wanna hear when you're done, what? Come on, men. <laughs> Woo! All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. While you guys are right there on the line, face the tree line, present your pistol to the berm, remove the source of ammunition, stow it on your body, cycle, 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 and lock the slide to the rear. Visually and if needed, physically inspect the chamber. After you've done so, run that slide forward and holster up. Mick. Hey Mick, I'm rolling. Hey! Oh, sorry dude. I uh, I had my ear pro on. Uh -huh. <laughs> ah, just kidding. I didn't actually, I could hear him because these things have awesome audio. These are my my newest addition to the ear pro family here. The, the frickin' pro gold 230 decibel reduction. So people are saying to me like, dude, a little big. Well, first of all, I can't help it if mine are bigger than yours, okay? Relax, can't help it. But in reality, why are they big? Well, super decibel reduction. So if you've got something that's slimmer, like the ones you normally see me wear, they work good. These just have five, six, seven more dB reduction. That's a big deal when you've spent your life like I have around noisy things, on gun ranges, heavy equipment, etc. Every little bit counts.